this is our second video in the review of linear functions and we're going to be focused on simultaneous equations here. So generally speaking, simultaneous equations, we have two algebraic methods, um, elimination or substitution. Um, I advocate the use of substitution when one or both of the equations has, well, whatever the variables are, x or y, a, b, whatever the variables are, as the subject of the equation. So if you have x equals such and such or y equals such and such, I would definitely use substitution or if it's very quick and easy to rearrange to that form. Otherwise, I would tend to go with elimination. Okay, so part of the, part of the um, effectiveness here is making good choices about which method is best, which method is most efficient, um, which method is going to get me there as quickly as possible. As I said, this course, you're not going to be, you know, maths methods generally speaking over the next two years, you're not going to be assessed on linear functions, but it is inherent in so many other things, okay? You're going to need to solve linear equations, simultaneous equations all the time, but as part of more complex things, okay? So these really do need to be skills that are bread and butter that you know how to do without thinking about and that you can make good, efficient choices about. All right, so... Example one here, we're going to solve um, the following pairs of simultaneous equations. Um, oh, the key other key thing is to understand what it is that you're actually doing when you're solving simultaneous equations, because quite often in this course, the question won't be solve these equations. The question will require that you understand that in this context, solving simultaneous equations is how I'm going to obtain the answer that I need. So you need to know what it is that you're obtaining. So when we're solving a pair of linear equations, simultaneous equations, or any simultaneous equations, in fact, what we're actually doing is finding when those two equations go through the same point. We're finding the x and y values that make both equations true. So that means graphically that is the coordinates of the point where those two graphs would cross. Be clear about the fact that if the question is just asking you to solve simultaneous equations, it's not asking you to give a pair of coordinates. However, if you're asked, being asked to find the coordinates of the point where the two lines cross, you'll need to use simultaneous equation solving, but you should give your answer as a pair of coordinates. So making sure you're answering the question depending on what was asked. All right, so let's have a look at 1a. Um, so what I'm seeing here straight away is that the first equation is in the form y equals and so that means I'm going to substitute because what that tells me is that this thing is y. So I can replace y in the other equation with that. My apologies. Um, so I'm simply going to, and sometimes it's helpful I think to signpost what you're doing here to help keep clear in your own mind. You don't need to do this. Um, but again, particularly with elimination, I find if students aren't conscious about whether they're adding the equations together or whether they're subtracting the equations, they make mistakes and they jumble things up. So what I'm actually doing here, if I label the equations as equation one and equation two, I am substituting equation one into equation two. And in doing so, I'm going to end up with 2x minus 3 times y, and y is 3x minus 5, and that equals 8. Okay, so make sure you use brackets when you substitute, um, because we need to then multiply that whole thing by 3, or negative 3 in this instance. Now we've got an equation only with x in it, so we can solve for x, and then we can go back and find y. So 2x minus 9x um, and plus 15 equals 8. 2x minus 9x is negative 7x. I'm going to take away 15, that's negative 7. So x is going to be 1. And then don't forget the second part of the solving is to then find, you found half of the solution, x, um, and you need to now find the y value. That will be a common error you'll make as well. You'll find x and then you'll move on. So we're going to substitute x into equation 1 in this instance because we're trying to find y, and equation 1 already has y as the subject. So it's 3 times 1 minus 5, which is 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. And so therefore the solution here is x equals 1, y equals negative 2. Only give coordinates if the question's asking you about the graphs and where they intersect, it's asked, if it asks for coordinates. Okay, B. Now in this instance I wouldn't use substitution because neither of the equations has x or y as the subject currently. And neither of them can be easily rearranged to make x or y the subject. In both instances, we'd end up with lots of fractions, and we don't want to create fractions if we don't need them. So I'm going to use elimination here. Elimination means that you create exactly the same term in both equations. So if we had 3x in both equations, we could eliminate x's by adding or subtracting the equations. So what we want to look at is, okay, well, our x terms, they're not the same. We've got a negative, the negatives don't matter. Well, that's 
that comes into whether you add or subtract the equations, but we've got three lots of x and seven lots of x, or the y values, we've got two lots of y and three lots of y. So neither can be eliminated straight away, but we now want to look at what can we do to the equations to make one of those um, terms the same. So we've got two options here. We could make the x terms the same by multiplying equation one by seven and equation two by three. Then we get 21x in both equations. Or we could make the y terms the same by multiplying equation one by three and equation two by two. Now I would choose this option because we're working with smaller numbers and then that'll keep everything a bit simpler. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, equation one, yeah, I'll just leave it in there. Sorry, equation one times three and equation uh, two times two. Make sure you multiply the whole equation. So equation one times three gives us negative nine X plus six Y equals 12. Okay, and when we multiply the whole equation by three, we're not changing the equation. It's still exactly the same equation, just written in a different way. Second equation times two, um, so it gives us 14X minus six Y equals negative two. I would never multiply by a negative number. I know some people advocate that, but I just focus on getting the coefficient, the number part of the coefficient the same. And then the decision is, do I need to add or do I need to subtract in order to eliminate? So the six y's are the same. If we were to subtract them, six y minus minus six y is not zero, or negative six y minus six y is not zero. So when the signs are different, you wanna add them in order to eliminate. So if I call this equation three and this equation four, technically they're the same equation, but just to signpost what I'm doing, I'm gonna to choose to do equation three plus equation four in order to eliminate the six y's. So negative nine x plus 14 x is uh, same as 14 x minus nine x, and that's 15 x. Six y plus negative six y is zero. That's why we've chosen to add, we're eliminating y. 12 plus negative 2 is 12 minus 2, which is 10. Okay, so x is 10 on 15, which is 2 on 3. Then we're going to need to find y, so we're going to need to substitute that back into the original equation. Now we can either go into equation 2 or into equation 1. I definitely want to go with equation 1 here because the, we've, got a, we've got a fraction with the denominator of three and in equation one, we're then gonna multiply it by three. So that will get rid of the fraction for us. Whereas going into here is gonna make things much more complicated. We get 14 on 14 thirds and the fraction doesn't simplify. It would in the long run, but it's easier to go back into equation one. All right, so I'm going to substitute X into equation one in this instance. So we get negative three times two thirds plus two times Y equals four. So the three and the third cancel out, and we've just got negative two plus two y equals four, and so two y equals six. I've added two to both sides, and dividing by two leaves me with three. And so therefore, x is two thirds, and y is three. Okay, part C, a pair of literal simultaneous linear equations. And these look very, very ugly. So again, we wanna focus on the same coefficients. Um, technically, if you think about the fractions are coefficients, it's one on A times X plus one on B times Y and one on B times X plus one on A times Y equals one. Um, so neither of these pairs of, um, are the same. So we're not gonna be able to eliminate straight away. Now, personally, what I would do, the minute I see fractions, and I'm trying to solve simultaneous equations, I'm going to try and get rid of the fractions before I solve. So I'm going to take equation one, and I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by AB, and that's going to get rid of the fractions. What I'm essentially doing is I am writing everything with a common denominator, oh, sorry, writing everything with a common denominator. And when I do that, I'm going to get uh, B times X plus A times Y equals AB. And so it is that equation. So I'm gonna do that to both equations. So I'm gonna multiply both equations by AB. So I'm gonna do equation one times AB and do equation two times AB. And then I'm gonna make decisions about how, I, how I'm gonna eliminate. Um, we could have done it, we could, have, we could stick with the fractions and do the elimination with the fractions and then worry about getting rid of them later, but again, my, my first strategy is always to try and get rid of them where I can. All right, so let's multiply everything by AB in the first equation. So when we multiply this term by AB, the A's cancel out and we're left with BX. 
when we multiply this term by AB, the B's cancel out and we're left with AY and 1 times AB is AB. I'm going to call that equation 3. Technically it is still the same equation as equation 1, but just for the purposes of being clear about what I'm doing. Um, the second equation, again, we're multiplying everything by A times B. So the B's will cancel out when we multiply um, the first term here. So we'll be left with AX. Here, the A's will cancel out and be left with BY equals AB. That's equation 4. Okay, so now at least I don't have fractions, but I've still got the same problem that the coefficients aren't the same for either the X terms or the Y terms. So now I'm going to focus on getting them the same. So... I'm going to, it doesn't matter whether we do x or y, let's make the x terms the same. If I multiply the first equation by a, we would have abx. And if I multiply the, sorry, if I multiply equation 3 by a, we'd have abx. And if I multiply equation 4 by b, we'll also have abx. So let's do that. Equation 3 multiplying everything by a gives us abx plus a squared y equals a squared b. Second equation, everything times b, well, sorry, equation 4, we get abx plus b squared y equals a b squared. Okay, I'm now going to eliminate, so let's call these 5 and 6. We can eliminate by subtracting. Um, I'm going to do equation 5 minus equation 6. You could also do 6 minus 5, whatever you prefer. Um, so the a, b, x's will cancel out when we subtract them. We're doing 5 minus 6, so we're going to still have a squared y minus b squared y when we do that subtraction. And on the right-hand side, we have a squared x minus a b squared. Okay, we're solving for y here. y is a common factor on the left-hand side. a squared minus b squared. And then this is a squared b minus ab squared. And then to get y on its own, we're going to divide by a squared minus b squared. Okay, so there's still a lot of ab's there. I want you to be really careful about cancelling. For example, this doesn't cancel with this. You need to have common factor in the whole numerator. Um, there's a much older series of videos on my YouTube channel focused only on algebraic fractions. Go and do some more work there if you don't understand why you can't just cancel that and that. But you must be able to, and this is why I don't like the word cancelling, the only way we can cancel a fraction is if we can divide the whole numerator by something and the whole denominator by that same something. Okay. So there needs to be common factors in order to do that. Okay. So in order to identify whether there are common factors, we need to factorise. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. I'm going to factorise as much as possible to see what might be common. So in the numerator, A is definitely common to both those terms and B is definitely common to both those terms. And when I take AB out, I'm going to be left with A minus B. The denominator, that's a difference of two squares. That's A plus B, A minus B when I factorise it. And so when we've fully factorised everything, now we can see we can divide both the top and the bottom by a minus b because there's a common factor of a minus b and that will cancel out. And we'll be left with ab over a plus b. Okay, we're only halfway there because that's y. We now need x. Okay, so where do we want to go back to? Um, I might go back to... Uh, I'm going to go back to one of the very original versions. Mm, try and decide whether to go back to a version with the fractions in it or whether to go back to one of equation 3 or 4. Maybe let's just go to equation 3 or 4, I think. I think it'll make it easier in the end. So I'm going to sub into, it doesn't really matter, 3. All right, so we know that b, bx plus, sorry, bx plus a times y, and y is ab over a plus b equals ab. All right, now we need to solve for x. Let's deal with that fraction first. So it's, sorry, plus, it's a over 1, so we just multiply the numerator by a. So it's a squared b on a plus b. Okay, bx equals ab minus a squared b on a plus b. I'm going to focus on um, tidying up that right-hand side before I divide by b to get x on its own. So I need a common denominator. Common denominator is a plus b. So remember, this is currently 1. So I, that first um, term, I multiplied the top and the bottom by a plus b to get the common denominator. 
We don't need to do anything to the second fraction. Okay, let's expand out the numerator and put them on the left and then put the fractions together. So we're going to have a squared b plus ab squared take away a squared b all over a plus b. And so actually the a squared b's cancel out, which is nice. And so we have ab squared over a plus b. Now that's equal to bx. So x is going to be equal to, we need to divide that by b. Divided by b. Okay, remember, dividing by something, we, when we're working with fractions, we can multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same as ab squared over a plus b times 1 over b. Okay, and then we can cancel one of those b's with that b. And we're going to have ab over a plus b. And so therefore, x is ab over a plus b. And y, I think, was the same thing. Yep, ab over a plus b. There is lots of good algebra there, and absolutely that's a level at which you need to be operating to be successful in maths methods. Okay, So uh, I'm sure you'll need a bit of practice on some of that, but let's get stuck into some practice in exercise 1c. Simultaneous equations with numbers, but also making sure that you do some of the literal simultaneous equations.